Y'all remember when I did that hyper romantic episode about Elizabeth Siddall? If you don't, you don't have to watch it before this one, but I would recommend scrolling back and watching it when we're done here. Suffice to say, the last time I talked about Dante Gabriel Rossetti and his muse Elizabeth Siddall, it was very tragic. But talking about Rossetti and this muse, it's going to be a six days, seven nights, all expenses paid vacation to a Victorian sex fest. So, get ready. This is Fanny Cornforth. So, we're back with the pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood who were very serious and made a lot of very serious looking Renaissance throwback serious art. Anyway, Fanny Cornforth was born in 1835 in Sussex. And back then she was named Sarah Cox. Can't make this stuff up. So Sarah, later Fanny, was an artist model and she met Dante Rossetti in 1856. And she became his model slash mistress whenever his main model mistress, Elizabeth Siddall, wasn't around. If you'll remember, he married Elizabeth in 1860 and she died of an overdose in 1862. And while Dante was heartbroken and many movies have been made about their doomed relationship, he was definitely banging Fanny that whole time. Some historians think that Elizabeth disliked Fanny. Gee, I wonder why. Others say there's no evidence that Elizabeth knew Fanny ever existed. Fanny was kind of a dirty little secret. She was very beautiful, but she came from kind of lower class rural stock and Rossetti's people didn't like her too much. She was often described as having a thick cockney accent, lewd humor, and loose morals. Girl was a good time. But as if we don't have enough folks coupling up in this story already, Fanny did marry a mechanic a year after Dante Rossetti married Elizabeth. But their marriage fell apart and they separated pretty quickly. So, being separated from her husband and Rossetti being newly single after the death of Elizabeth in 1862, Fanny wastes no time moving into Rossetti's place as his housekeeper, pretty much fooling no one. I'm sure she also cleaned. And Rossetti paints her. His paintings of her are gorgeous. The Pre-Raphaelites and Rossetti in particular gravitate toward these thin, waif-like models. But that was quite different with Fanny. His paintings of her highlight her voluptuousness. I think they're quite sexy. Before painting a lot of pictures of Fanny's lovely face, Rossetti had this fascination with medievalism. You know, like his painting, The Tune of Seven Towers. That sort of Game of Thrones thing he was really into. But with Fanny, he did these powerful close-ups with dense color. Apparently, her voluptuousness only intensified throughout the course of their relationship, and Rossetti got fatter too. And they used to joke about it. He called her his dear elephant, and she called him her old rhinoceros. It's sweet, right? They seem kind of happy to me. But Rossetti's family didn't like her. His brother said she was beautiful, but had no charm of breeding, education, or intellect. Dude. Fanny's reputation as this low-class woman giving her body up without marriage tarnishes her memory even today. There are several biographies of Rossetti where Fanny isn't even mentioned. But the truth is, she was there until the end. Rossetti's health began to seriously decline in 1877, and that's when his family finally forced Fanny out of the house. So, 
1877. Yeah, there were a few years at the beginning there where they were married to other people, but Fanny and Dante Rossetti were together over 20 years. He bought her a house nearby and gave her several of his paintings. And he wrote her, you are the only person whom it is my duty to provide for. And you may be sure I should do my utmost as long as there is breath in my body and a penny in my purse. Rossetti died of drug addiction in 1882. Coral hydrate, that was his drug of choice, where laudanum had been Elizabeth Siddall's. So in the end, they both died of drug overdoses, but not Fanny. Fanny is not a tragic Victorian. She even married again. She met a man named John Scott who divorced his current wife who was already living in a bigamous marriage with another man because everyone is having sex with at least two people at once at any given point of this story. Fanny and John lived into old age, running the Rose Tavern together in London. That's nice. Fanny didn't die until she was an old woman in 1905, having lived, in my opinion, a life filled with affection, sex, and beauty.